Hey, what's up you guys? It's Abby Andrew and welcome back to my channel. Today I was going to do a review on this wig, which is Cody by Amore, but I've actually already reviewed this wig before. You can check out that video linked on the screen or in the description below. So today, instead of reviewing it again, I'm actually going to show you a couple of my favorite ways to style this wig. So to give a little bit of backstory on this wig, this was the wig that I considered my like my real hair for maybe, I think, six years. So to clarify what, what I mean by that, I've had alopecia since I was about two years old, wore wigs consistently from about the age of seven um, until now, I'm 25 years old now. And for most of that time, up until I was about 19 years old, I treated whatever wig I was wearing at the time like it was my real hair. And if anybody asked me questions, I would let them think it was my real hair, only wore the same style and color so that nobody would think it wasn't my real hair. And for years between the ages of like, um, maybe like when I was in eighth grade up until I think about like senior year of high school, the wig that was my go-to wig for all those years was Cody in various blonde colors like this one which is creamy blonde and then I also dabbled in vanilla lush. Creamy blonde is like the lighter version and then vanilla lush is like a slightly more golder slightly darker version but still a very very light color. So yeah for all those years if anyone knew me they knew me as this hairstyle whereas now if you see me on a like a, a regular basis I'm always wearing different hairstyles and different colors all the time. So yeah if you want to check out the review I have for this wig uh, it's actually on the Cody XO so let me briefly explain the difference between Cody and Cody XO. The only difference is the wig cap construction. So this one just has a double monofilament cap. This is the one that I wore for like all those years when I wore Cody, it was this one because the Cody XO wasn't out yet. So this one is amazing. Um, I love this one all the same. Honestly, I don't really feel that much of a difference between the XO and the regular cap. I think they're both very, very comfortable. But the difference is that this one is double monofilament and that one I think is also monofilament, but it just has some cap construction features that are designed to be a little bit more comfortable on a bald head. And it also has a bit of a lace front as well in that version, whereas this one is just the double monofilament cap that most Amore wigs have. And I think that this one is equally as comfortable. I'll just briefly show you the cap construction just so you guys can see, but it is the cap construction that most Amore wigs have. So it's just the double monofilament on top, the adjustable wig cap, and the mesh netting and the ear tabs that kind of can like bend to fit your head. I also want to give a little bit of backstory on this wig because this wig is my first introduction to like the world of real good quality wigs because for years honestly when I was in like elementary school I was actually wearing like good quality good brand name wigs but my problem was that I was a child wearing adult women's wigs and I also did not know how to care for them at all so I don't even remember what the brands were that I was wearing in like elementary school young age but they were way too big for my head, so I just looked like it, they just did not look right at all. They definitely looked very wiggy because of that. So one day my parents took me to a wig store on Long Island. I'm actually going to name the specific wig store because I want to give them a little shout out because um, they, this company, this woman who runs this company literally like changed my life as far as being a wig wearer. Her name is Denise and she owns a wig store in Levittown, New York called Wig Boutique. Uh, and if you want to follow her on Instagram, her Instagram is wigboutique2000, I believe. I will link it below and on the screen. But it's it's actually so funny because I don't know if she knows how much she like affected me as a wig wearer, but when my parents took me there, I think it was in like the seventh or eighth grade, like I was pretty young. And um, I was still wearing like my rattier wigs that just like did not fit me at all because I was a very small child. I mean, like I was a preteen at that point, like a te young teen and like, a lot of the times I ordered these wigs online that um, I wasn't able to like see how they looked on me until they arrived in the mail and a lot of these wig companies at least during that time had restocking fees so my parents didn't like the idea of me like getting a wig trying it on um, and then if it didn't look good returning it because there's always a restocking fee so even if it didn't look good sometimes I would just have to like settle for whatever we got in the mail so that's the beauty of visiting wig stores in person and why I'm such a strong supporter of like trying to go visit wig stores in person if you can, if you're new to wigs. Because when I met Denise that day, when I was like 12 or 13 years old, she sat me down. I was still very secretive about my alopecia, so she like closed the curtain and made sure I had complete privacy. And she tried on all these different wigs on me. I wanna see if I, oh my gosh, I know my dad took a bunch of pictures back in the day when this happened. And I wanna see if he can send me those pictures so I can include them in this. <laughs> So my dad actually sent me a bunch of old photos that he found and this first one is a perfect depiction of the wig store experience. You're just surrounded by wigs, get to try on lots of different styles and colors. That's my stepmom and dad there in the background, my dad holding the camera and taking all these mirror photos. 
That's Denise there in the background styling it on my head. This is so funny because I think this wig is actually a Noriko wig, so it's kind of like foreshadowing because I ended up actually working for the Adirans Wig Company, which Noriko is a part of. You can even actually see the Noriko tag in one of the photos. I can't believe there was a time where I was this camera shy. Like, I didn't smile in any of these photos. I look so uncomfortable. And I feel like it was the beginning of my attempted edgy phase, so I'm just like, I look like an angry little boy in some of these photos. In this photo too, you can also see the Renee of Paris tag as well. These photos are like me in my prime of my awkward phase at like age 12, um, so don't mind all the very awkward poses. This wig here is actually the wig that I wore regularly, so as you can see, I think this actually probably was a nice quality wig. I just didn't really know how to care for it properly. The ends are all frayed. That color probably wasn't great for my skin tone, um, so Denise really helped me figure out what was a good style and color for my face shape and my skin tone. But that day she also introduced me to Cody by Amour and that was the wig that I wore for years ever since that. Also, if you do happen to live on Long Island um, and you are watching this video and the pandemic is still happening, I just checked her website and I know that Denise is doing, uh, I think she's doing virtual wig consultations. That's super cool. I think they're not positive. I think they're free consultations. So I think you can sign up for them on her website if you are interested in that and do live in the area. And then I think she also has free curbside delivery as well. So if you are watching this and you live on Long Island near Levittown and it's still the pandemic, there's that option for you as well. Another really funny side story about Denise is that I hadn't seen her in years since then. I think I visited her wig store like every couple months. Uh, every time I like bought a new wig, I would visit her at that wig store and only see her then. Um, but I really, I don't know if she knew how much of an impact that she had on me as a wig wearer. And then in I think 2018, in like March or so, I attended a conference, like a wig conference in Las Vegas of all places. Um, and saw her there at this wig conference, even though we're both from New York, like she's living on Long Island, I think I was living in upstate New York at the time, hadn't seen her in years. I saw her at this wig conference and was like, like it felt like I was seeing a relative, like that's how much she changed my life. And I don't know if she knows how much her, her influence changed my life as like a wig wearer, but um, she's literally the reason that I wore this wig for so many years because she introduced it to me, helped me discover wigs that fit my face, um, how to maintain the wigs better, and how to style them so they looked more natural. So just for memory's sake, I'm just going to start with the wig style that Denise showed me when I visited her wig store all those years ago. So basically it was just her way of teaching me how monofilament caps worked, but she showed me how like, obviously you can wear Cody down and it looks really, really awesome, but she showed me how you can like pull the hair back and like do a cute style like that. And the monofilament cap will still look natural on top. So this wig style, this is so funny. Like anyone that was friends with me back in middle school would know that this is the style that I wore like every single freaking day because I just thought that like with the monofilament cap showing that it made my wigs look so much more natural. <laughs> so I was like really, really obsessed with this style after I discovered it and wore it probably like for like that whole year. I typically use like a butterfly clip, but this is the only clip I could find right now. I don't think it's even going to be big enough to hold the hair, uh, but I guess it'll do for this video. But I really, really loved this style in middle school. Honestly, I'm not sure if I would wear it now, only because it just reminds me of myself in middle school. It actually is a really cute style though for all ages, so that is a cute one. And it does, um, the scalp does show on top still, so it actually looks like super natural. The next one is also one that I liked to wear in high school a lot. This is one that I particularly wore in like 11th and 12th grade. It's just like a baby ponytail. You can literally just put the hair in a ponytail and it actually looks like super cute. Um, because it is so short, the fronts kind of like tend to fall out, but I also like that because then you can still have the face framing layers, but have your hair pulled back. So it's almost just like making it an even shorter looking style. And it's almost like a kind of like punky ponytail because it's so tiny and so cute. And also the back of it kind of falls out as well. But I actually think that looks kind of cute and it makes it look a little bit layered. And yeah, if I went to like the gym or worked out or anything, I would put my hair like this. But honestly, now if I work out in this wig, I just leave it down because it's like short and it's reasonable to wear it down too. But I think it also is cute in a little baby ponytail. And this, this next one is actually very, very similar to that, but it's just kind of like doing a mini ponytail on the back of your head. So it's like, you're not purposely trying to grab all the hair, but you're just kind of grabbing like the topmost layer and tying that in a ponytail behind your head. I actually don't know what this hairstyle is called. I know it's like a very common hairstyle. I don't know if it has a name though. Comment below if, it, if you know a common name for it, but this is a style that I love to wear on a lot of different wigs. This definitely looks super cute on Cody, 
but this particular style I love to wear on wigs when they're new and really really poofy looking and I feel like they look too big on my head because I feel like I have a relatively like I have like small features so sometimes if I'm wearing a very poofy wig it looks a little bit crazy on me um, so sometimes when a, a wig a lot of times when wigs come in the mail and they're super poofy that poofiness tends to die down in like a week or two so if you do get a really poofy wig um, it's a big possibility that it's not going to stay like that so sometimes I like to wear this particular style on my wigs uh, that can be a little bit poofy at first. I have to actually wear this style more often. It is actually very, very cute on my Cody. <laughs> okay, two more styles, also pretty similar to each other. Um, pretty much all these are just different variations of like pigtails and ponytails. They're all very, very simple styles. Uh, this next one is literally just pigtails. <laughs> I actually started doing this hairstyle as a like sort of bubbles from the Powerpuff Girls cosplay but then once I did it for the cosplay I was like okay this is actually kind of a cute style oh my gosh I think that's just so cute it also kind of reminds me of um, Harley Quinn from the latest Harley Quinn movie she like cuts her pigtails short and they're about this length it's too nice of a wig for me to justify dyeing it into a Harley Quinn wig right now but if this wig does start to get to the end of its lifespan and I end up replacing it, I am totally dying this to be a Harley Quinn wig. I don't think I made the pigtails even right now, but I'm just gonna show you like a quick style. And the very last style I'm going to show you is another very simple one, pretty similar to pigtails. However, it's just pigtails like on the top halves of your hair, almost like Spice Girls hair, or like if you watch anime like Misa from Death Note. <laughs> I think the first time I ever did this hairstyle was back when I was in like early high school or middle school and I was watching Death Note for the first time and I was like I wanted to try Misa hair and then I actually just genuinely liked the style. But for some reason I've been wearing this hairstyle a lot in quarantine. I don't know why, I just get, I've been experimenting with my wigs a lot while I'm stuck at home and I discovered I'm obsessed with this hairstyle. I know a lot of these hairstyles are not for everyone, some of them kind of look like they're for little kids. but. Like I said, I, I think they're really cute. Uh, and sometimes I think it's a funny contrast if you're wearing like kind of a grungy looking outfit and then like a kid looking style on your hair. I just think it looks really cute. I feel like that's really in fashion lately, my personal opinion, but I just think these hairstyles are super cute and just a fun way to mix up your wig if you feel like doing something different. So that is all for this video. Let me know in the comments below which of these styles that I showed you was your favorite. If you have any other particular ways that you like to style your short wigs or just your wigs in general. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and I will see you guys in the next video.